Tonight, MPP majority activate processes to have Parliament recalled to consider and approve President's ministerial nominees just hours after the Supreme Court dismissed an application against parliamentary approval as frivolous and abuse of the court process. And that application clearly was, was frivolous and there ought not to be any um, manipulation of what went on in court. Even Parliament itself was opposed to the application. We have the latest as the main opposition NDC takes on the Chief Justice accusing the judiciary of bias in expediting the hearing of this particular case. More from the Attorney General who has revealed he got the Supreme Court to sit earlier on this case. So will he do the same for the cases against the anti-LGBTQ bill? The record we show that this particular case, for the record, it must be indicated that I specifically applied for an expedited determination of the, of the matter. I applied for an expedited hearing of the application. You applied for an expedited hearing uh, in the Richard Sky case? I, uh, so I think you should ask the plaintiff, the plaintiff is the one who instituted the action. I'm not going to conduct the case for a plaintiff. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. Tonight, the MPP majority in Parliament, they have activated processes to have Parliament recalled to consider and approve President's ministerial nominees. Just hours after the Supreme Court dismissed an application against the parliamentary approval as frivolous and an abuse of the court processes. Now, the main opposition NDC has tonight uh, been taking on the Chief Justice in the wake of the expedited hearing of this particular case. He accused the Chief Justice of being unfair. And that case was filed by Roxy Nelson Dafiamekwa uh, against the approval of some of these ministerial nominees. And, and this was head ahead of another suit against a controversial uh, anti-gay bill passed by Parliament, which was the first to be filed. Now, these two cases are the center of the unpass between the presidency and the legislature. Uh, I want to bring in my parliamentary correspondent, who is also on the legal affairs desk. He's been in Parliament uh, today, but also in court uh, today uh, for us, uh, telling us a bit of what has been happening there, uh, a day of drama. Indeed, and Kweku Asante joins us on the line right now. Kweku, uh, we'll get into the statement of the NDC shortly. But first, uh, tell us what happened in court today when this case came up. Well, Evan, so in court today, the plaintiff, that is Rustin Nelson, that came before, was absent. His lawyer, Nipa Kusamuado, was also absent. There was no representative for any of them either. There was also no explanation as to what might have happened. And in fact, the bailiff was put under oath to explain the circumstances under which he was able to serve the lawyers for Roxy Nelson Department for. According to him, when he did go to the law firm of Mr. Kutamado, he met a lady called Na, who said she was under the instruction of Mr. Kutamado not to receive any court summons or any court process whatsoever. The attorney general pressed to have him suspended or some disciplinary action taken against him. But ultimately, when it came to the case, the Supreme Court decided that despite the absence of the NDCMP and his lawyers, they were going to go ahead and hear this case. They first heard from the Speaker of Parliament's lawyers in the person of Tadio Sori, who disagreed with the NDCMP and actually urged the Supreme Court to dismiss the application. And then it was the time to hear from the Attorney General Government Department, who also held the same view as the Speaker of Parliament, that the, the text for the Supreme Court to grant an interlocutory injunction has not been met in this case, and then the applicant has not sufficiently, as it were, made a case to show that any any harm, irreparable harm, as, as you say, will be done to him if the case is, is, is to go ahead without the injunction being granted. So ultimately, the five-member panel presided over by the Chief Justice herself unanimously dismissed the application injunction, and in the words of the Chief Justice, they were frivolous, 
and it was an abuse of the processes of the court. And did the court say anything about the absence of the plaintiff in this particular matter and the lawyer? Yes, Evans, the court decided that there has been no explanation as to why the lawyer and the, 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 the lawyer and the client were not all in court. And in fact, the police, the bailiff was able to show that despite the lawyer allegedly refusing to receive this summons and other court documents, that was going to show when the court case was going to head. He left the court documents, and the court construed that as having been served. And so having been served, there was nothing to stop the court from going ahead to hear this case. So the Supreme Court proceeded to hear the case in the absence of the plaintiff and his lawyers and proceeded to render judgment. And what's the Attorney General's reaction to the ruling, and what does he expect Parliament to do now? Well, the Attorney General is clear that is the Speaker of Parliament erred when he decided to adjourn the House. He wants the House to as it were, as a matter of agency, return to come and consider those agent government business that are currently outstanding. He also says, just like the Supreme Court has said, the case was frivolous from the start. And that the application clearly was, was frivolous, and there ought not to be any um, manipulation of what went on in court. Even Parliament itself was opposed to the application. On, on the cases that are being heard, there are those who have taken the view that some cases were filed two weeks prior to this case being filed, and the Supreme Court has proceeded to deal with it. The Chief Justice himself has raised issues about persons not prosecuting their own cases. What, what do you make of that? Yes, I mean, as I said, it's most unfortunate that persons will file processes before the court and then uh, fail to take an interest in it. And indeed, even when the same application for integral to injunction and spending has not been determined a day before they proceed to go and file another application for integral to injunction. There cannot be a greater demonstration of, of, of a desire to abuse the court's process than this. Clearly it shows an attempt to frustrate the, the Republic from pursuing its business and all. And that is why it's necessary that um, as lawyers for the Republic we take a keen interest in whatever happens and make sure that such things are, are dealt with so that um, the state business can proceed. On record um, in Parliament. It's a letter that I wrote to the Speaker asking him to reconsider his decision and all. So I expect Parliament, after having come to the Supreme Court, to oppose this application to also um, reconvene and, and deal with the, the matter relating to the approval of the, of the ministers. There's nothing at all that impedes or inhibits Parliament from, from doing its work they ought to do their work. And I think that the adjournment of proceedings was most unjustified yes, and, and, and uncalled for. And Kweku, at the center of this controversy are two cases, one of which has just been looked at by the Supreme Court and dismissed after just been reporting. The other case relates to the Richard Sky case against the anti-gay bill, which the president has cited for his reason uh, not to receive the bill, although it's been passed by parliament. Now, there are concerns about that from the NDC. We'll come to that pretty shortly. But that case was filed before this particular one, but has been heard already. You've been putting that question to the Attorney General, and he's been disclosing that he actually got the Supreme Court to, to hear this particular case expeditiously. Yes, in fact, in the NDC statement that we'll get into pretty shortly, the NDC made the case that it is the Chief Justice and the Supreme Court that had prioritized this case over the anti-LGBTQ bill case. But right after this case, the Attorney General actually now revealed that he is the one who got the court to hear this expeditious. Of course, it does not explain how he was able to do that. But I put the question to him. If you are so much interested in this and you are getting expedited hearing for this also, are you going to get the Supreme Court to sit on that case as early as practicable? I mean, the Richard Alak Skies case. He says, well, he's not interested in that. And as far as he's concerned, if Richard Alaska himself is not interested in prosecuting the case, or the Speaker of Parliament himself who is a party, do not move processes to get a case heard, then the status quo will, will, will maintain. Is the, the position that if Richard Sky does not prosecute this case, the Supreme Court is not going to hear it, and the, 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 the hand of the President is going to be stayed on this bill up until Richard Sky decides that he takes, an, he takes an interest in this matter? Well, if, if Richard Sky does not prosecute the matter, the application will, will be dismissed. <laughs> the process he has filed in court will be dismissed. Yes, yes. yes. so, and, but, hold on, hold on. I think that the duty to fix the date for hearing rests in the registry of the, of the Supreme Court. And I do not understand where this business of people actually um, scrutinizing when applications are faced for hearing or why these applications are for hearing even came from. Back in the days, if we file an application in the Supreme Court of Ghana, it takes even three months for you to have a date for hearing.
it is only after a party has made an application for an expeditious determination of the of the process that the matter will come up for hearing. And indeed, in, in the record, we show that this particular case, for the record, it must be indicated that I specifically applied for an expeditious determination of the, of the matter. I applied for an expedited hearing of the application. So it is not the Supreme Court of Ghana uh, picking and choosing which applications to hear and not to, not to hear. Any party to any matter, back in the days I used to do it even when I was in opposition. So indeed, it is always the prerogative of the Supreme Court registry to face applications for hearing. And if the date for hearing has not been fixed or is perhaps too far, it is incumbent on the party to apply to the Chief Justice in accordance with the, um, the Courts Act and the Constitution of the Republic for an expedited hearing. You file for an expedited hearing uh, in the Sky case. I, I, so, I, I think you should ask the plaintiff. Well, the plaintiff is the one who instituted the action. The plaintiff is the one who instituted the, the action, and the plaintiff ought to um, bear the responsibility for, 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 for the conduct of the, of the matter. I'm not going to conduct the case for the plaintiff. And quickly, why is the Attorney General pushing for Roxing Nelson, the Femme lawyer, to be punished by the court? Well, today the bailiff under oath actually explained to the court that when he did go to meet Papu Samuado's law firm to serve him with certain court processes, the instruction that Nick Papu Samuado had given some members of the firm was that he should not receive anything from the court. And the Attorney General says he considers that the highest form of disrespect. In fact, in court today, he pushed on two different occasions to get a five-member panel to take a tougher stance against the lawyer. The, the court have said that they are not going to take any decision now, and in the words of the chief justice, they will look at that at a later date. But the attorney general is so pressing that some action ought to be taken against the Papu Samuado. For a lawyer who has filed an application in the matter to direct a rejection of the affidavit of position that has been filed by the other side, I mean, it's, it's really, for me, gross professional misconduct. With as it may, uh, the court proceeded to deal with the matter, and, and, and that is it. Um, I think that was very unfortunate, especially as the same counsel was in the same day filing processes in the Supreme Court of Ghana. Earlier in the morning, he was rejecting processes from the Supreme Court of Ghana, and then in the afternoon, he proceeded to file uh, processes in the same Supreme Court of Ghana. And I think the processes of the highest court of the Republic ought to be respe respected. The dignity and authority of the court always ought to be protected and respected by all counsel. And that is the point I sought to make in court. And I want to run and bring in the director of legal uh, at the NDC's legal directorate, Edwiji Tamaklo on the line right now because the party has issued a statement and they're very unhappy with the Supreme Court for expediting the hearing of this particular case when the other case which was filed earlier by Rachel Sky is yet to be heard. You know, those two uh, cases are the heart of this standoff between the judiciary, uh, the uh, parliament itself and the presidency. Now, as you know, the judiciary has been placed in the center of this whole controversy. He joins us right now on the telephone line. Edwiji, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Good evening, uh, Ivan. Good evening to your listeners. You've raised concerns about the. You've raised concerns about fairness. You've also asked the uh, judiciary to rectify this immediately because it's entrenching the perception that they are biased against the NDC. But the Attorney General just explained to us that he made an application to the court for expedited hearing. Doesn't that clear this up? It doesn't. In fact, <clears throat> this revelation by the Attorney General even makes the concern raised by the NDC even more grievous. Why do I say so? The rules of court allows the party, as it were, to apply for abridgment of time. If the person so believes that the matter is so urgent that the original date the hearing of the matter may cause a certain harm or, you know, damage. And for that matter, prefers expedition. What you do is that you file a formal application. And by way of formal application, the other party is duly served. Then the parties appear before a panel 
the Supreme Court reserved that it could be one person. Then that panel, she's with jurisdiction to hear the substantive matter, will now say that on the basis of this application for abridgment of time and the positions accompanying it, the court is so minded to abridge time to allow for expeditious hearing. In this case, let me put on record, and again, the Supreme Court is the court of record, the attorney there has never filed any application for abridgment of time. How do you know this? It's on record. He never filed. In fact, the only process the attorney there filed was an affidavit in opposition to the application for injunction. Where did the Supreme Court of Ghana sit to consider the application for abridgment of time? No such. It was purely an ex parte communication between Godfrey Ebu Adami and whoever set the date for today. He never copied the lawyer for the other party. In fact, it was only a yearly notice sent to appear in court today that was alleged to have been served on them. So in the absence of a formal application, question, was it a telephone call from Godfrey Dami? Was it a letter written by Mr. Godfrey Yebu Adami? How did he do the application? And this for us is a worrying trend. Why do we say it is worrying? They are two similarly placed injunction applications. Two by Richard Delasky and Dr. Amanda Odo. These two applications were earlier filed. Meanwhile, Godfrey Yemuadami, according to him, he applied not for a seditious hearing of the two applications filed earlier in time, but for the application filed by H. Yeah, but but you know why, right? He's explained that. This particular case, he's been, what, he's been what cited. What explanation did he provide? Well, his explanation is that the Richard Sky case is Richard Sky's case. If he wanted expedited hearing of the case, he should take that particular step. But this no, case but is a case that he's interested in. Adami the plaintiff in the Dafyan report? Well, but he is the chief legal advisor to the government and to the and to the presidency, as you know. And this is a subject that he has already written to the Speaker of Parliament about because it affects the confirmation of the nominees. So he's interested, and that is why he takes this matter to the Supreme Court. First of all, no, first of all, the suit by Amanda, the suit by Richard the last guy, the attorney general is a party. The attorney general is a party. So if he could apply for expeditious hearing in the Roxin that you suit, what prevented him from doing so? In the same suit that he's a party. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean that he's done anything wrong. He is obviously deciding what cases to pursue, which every attorney general is allowed no, to do. No, you see, your, 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 your journalist asked him a question, and I was listening to the interview. When your journalist asked him, how come you are not applying for a expeditious hearing in the richest class? He said, I am not the plaintiff, unquote. The suit that the Supreme Court had today, Godfrey Diego Adami, was he the plaintiff or is he the plaintiff? Mr. Evans Mensa, is Godfrey Diego Adami the plaintiff in the suit that the Supreme Court had today? That's a question that the Attorney General should answer. No, but, but... it is not a question for him to answer. It's a question you know. He is not the plaintiff. But and in this particular case, as I pointed out, that we have raised. as I pointed out, you know he's already written to the speaker, objecting to yes. the position that the speaker took to freeze the hearing of the confirmation by the MPs of the Ministry of Nominees. He's already stated his position on this matter. It is in that no. same vein that he decides to go to the Supreme Court for expedited hearing on the matter. No, what I'm telling you is that by what mode? Did he go to the Supreme Court for expedited hearing? He did not indicate, but he says no. He, but he the, got the Supreme Court have to do. indicated to you that the Supreme Court of Ghana is a court of record. 
even if it's an oral application, it's an application made before a panel of the Supreme Court, be it a sole judge or a panel of judges. The Supreme Court has not sat on the matter of H. A. Dafia Melko versus Speaker and the Attorney General. For which reason, an oral or formal application has been made to abridge time. No, but, but, but you're not you're not a party to that case, so you can't possibly know if he's made an oral. No, 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 no. I mean, the, the Supreme Court doesn't sit, quote unquote, in a room. The Supreme Court brought out its revised court list for. This week. In fact, if you read the headed, it is revised. It means that there was an original cost list. In that cost list. Your call has been put on hold. Please wait. Uh, apologies there. Uh, we'll try and rectify that for you pretty quickly. As uh, so did you speak so we can have clarity uh, with his line uh, to us. But he's making a fundamental point about the revelation that the Attorney General uh, gave us today that this expedited hearing is something that he had instigated. The question he's asking is, did this, did this happen uh, formally? We'll try and interrogate if this is uh, a process in court that is known. Uh, and, and yes, uh, apologies, your line was interrupted pretty shortly. Uh, you were making a substantive point. Yes. Evans, is it better now? It is. Okay, thank you. So, like I pointed out, when you file a formal application before the Supreme Court of Ghana, the court can sit with a sole judge or a panel of judges. In the specific case of Roxanne Dafiamoko versus the Speaker and others, today is the first time the Supreme Court has constituted a panel to hear this matter. When the matter came up for hearing today, it was not in respect or to consider an application to a brief time to hear the injunction application. No. Two, the hearing notice that was, as it were, served on the plenty was for him to appear in court today for the hearing of the substantive injunction application and not to consider any application to average time. So when the attorney general makes the point that he applied for the expeditious hearing, the question that comes obviously is that by what mode? Was it a letter? Was it by a telephone conversation? How did you do that? Stay with me. Stay with me, Aduji. Let me bring in a private legal practitioner, Bobby Bansi, into the conversation. Uh, Bobby, so as we have it now, the Supreme Court decided to hear this case today. The AG just disclosed that he indeed made an application uh, for this to happen. Uh, as you've just been listening to, Eddie says there isn't any record to show that a formal application was put in and that if, even if it was an oral application, he's not aware of the Supreme Court sitting on this matter. What is the standard procedure if you want an expedited hearing of a case? Good, good um, evening, Evans, and good evening to your listeners. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. I, I am not sure what the Attorney General meant by he put in an application or he instigated the hearing of the matter. Let, let, let me say what I know about the practice or the procedure in the Supreme Court. There is, in respect of the Dafia Moto case, there is a substantive rate that is the originating process of the matter. That substantive rate has not been heard. That substantive rate going to the merits of the claim or the reliefs endorsed on the rate filed by the lawyers for Honorable Dafia Method. That has not been determined as far as the information I have now. Now, on the back of that rate, an application for interlocutory injunction was filed by the lawyers of Honorable Dafia Metal. Hello, Evans, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Now, when that application was filed, I am not on that application. I stand to be corrected. Was there an original return date? This is a question you are asking of. Um, yes, because I, I haven't. Heard... I haven't seen the, the specific documents. Okay, so when the interlocutory application was filed, 
it was indicated that a date to be fixed. And that has become the standard practice. That when you file an application in the appellate court, you are not given a date. You are given it when the process is given to the right a date to be fixed. And then you are let, later given a letter that the registry, the registrar of the court would serve you a hearing notice to appear on a certain date. Now, in this case, when the motion for interlocutory application for interlocutory injunction was filed, no hearing, no date was put on that motion itself. They received a letter that they will be given a date to appear. Now, subsequently, they were given a date by a hearing notice to appear today. Now, the issue of abridgment of time only comes in if you have an original date, a return date, an original one. And for some reason, you want the matter heard earlier than the original date given to you by the registry of the court. You must then file an application on notice to all the parties involved, justifying why you cannot wait for that original date. That is the process for abridgment of time. Now, in this particular case, the Honorable Dafia pursuit, there was no original date given. There was no original date given. And so the first time that a hearing notice was sent on all the parties to appear was this 20th, sorry, was for today. And so I do not know what the Attorney General means by, I didn't, I've not had the interview, but from what you are saying, that is what he seemed to have suggested, that he instigated for the case to be heard earlier. It seems to suggest that there may have been an earlier date served on the parties, and he abridged it. I don't know what he meant by that process. So thankfully, Bobby, the Attorney General just joined us. Let's clarify this, and let's okay. settle this particular uh, debate. Uh, thank you very much, Gofo Yubadami, for joining us. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Can you please Ivan. clarify that? Did the interview you gave uh, my reporter in, in, in court today, when you said and that? I think that um, I have agreed to speak to you because of the ignorance that is being put out there. A lot of ignorant and misleading information is being put out there, and I consider it my duty as a Minister for Justice to correct this, because indeed it has a grave implication for the administration of justice in the country. Ghana's judiciary has a very solid reputation out, out there within the Commonwealth. It's one of the most respected institutions in the justice delivery system in the Commonwealth of Nations. And for that matter, wrong impressions that are bandied about to solve the middle integrity are of concern to me, especially when they are unfounded and premised on false, on false counts. The issue is simple. As was explained by the lawyer we spoke to earlier on, no date has been fixed for the hearing of the application by Dr. Mapo. And for that matter, the issue of abridgment of time doesn't even arise at all. Edgy Tomaku doesn't even understand <laughs> the workings of the rules of court. An application for abridgment of time for hearing of the matter comes in when you have time, a setting or fixed time, fixed for the hearing of the relevant process we're talking about. And you seek to bring the date for it. That is when we talk about abridgment of time. You are abridging the time. You are bringing it for it. Where no date has been fixed, it is absolutely the duty of a party interested in the matter to cause the matter to be fixed for hearing. So I certainly wrote a letter to Her Ladyship, the Honorable Chief Justice of the Republic, asking for an expedited hearing of the matter and asking for an early date for hearing. That's a letter on record, as is done by all practitioners where they are sought. All practitioners who know the workings of rules of court. So, and, and I you did this in that the point that indeed I have done this many, many times. 15, 16 years ago, I made the first application about maybe eight years ago to the, I remember the then Chief Justice Aqua. I sent an application to him asking for an expedited hearing of a matter. He granted it. Even recently in the Supreme Court case 2011, that time, Edward Tomaclo was my student at the Ghana School of Law. <laughs> it's a matter of record. I applied for an expedited hearing of this um, um, famous Vance for France matter. 
and the two judges then granted the application and the matter was said in the vacation from day to day. So really, it is not unusual, it is not extraordinary, it is not out of place for a party in the matter to cause a matter to be listed for hearing or cause for the matter to be, to be set down for hearing. So what, what does it have value about NDC's uh, press statement and all that about the matter? Indeed, what interest does a party have in not having a matter heard early? If you are a plaintiff in a matter, your matter is, is, is being heard early, wouldn't you be happy? It clearly shows that the purpose of filing the action was not to, to, to have the Supreme Court actually determine it, but just to cause mischief. And that mischief is what I sought to deal with by causing the matter to be heard expeditiously. And that was in accord with the Constitution of the Republic and also in accord with the Courts Act. The Courts Act vests the Chief Justice with the duty and the power to empanel courts all over the country. And if a party is of the view that his matter ought to be heard, the party has to have recourse to the, to the rules governing the, the court processes within when, the Courts Act. When did so you... have, it shows clearly when the NDC will speak this way. It shows a total lack of understanding or total ignorance about the rules of court. When did you write and, this and, and letter? I wrote the letter on Monday. It's a matter, I can give you a copy tomorrow. And this is, 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 I mean, these are matters within the administrative authority or leadership of chief justice. Fixing a date for hearing, fixing a court or constituting a court all over the country, from the Supreme Court to the district court. I mean, this, this, this lends itself to no controversy. And this letter you wrote, thought, and this letter you wrote, came on the day on Monday when you still didn't know when the Supreme Court had fixed this substantive matter for? It came on a day when there was no date for the hearing and I caused the matter to be to be heard early. I wrote for the for the for the two justices to exercise their powers, to exercise their prerogative under the constitution and the Courts Act to cause the matter to be set down for hearing and heard expeditiously. And it's an application that is very constitutional, that is very legal, and that is now called the rules of court. As simple as that. And so, and I think that indeed they're asking how come this matter is said before another matter. The rules of, I mean, there's no basis at all for such argument. If that were the case, how come this matter um, openly has stayed in the court for about eight years? That one, A.G. Thomas Cullen and his ilk are not interested in it. They're not concerned about openly having dragged on for seven, eight years. Why are they not concerned about that one? And that Accused persons have had their judgment delivered and, and, and convicted and thrown into jail within a year or two of the matter being commenced. They're not interested in op- opening, being, or having dragged on in the course of seven, eight years. So, what is this thing about? I mean, we do not reduce the administration of justice to this. Are you aware when you wrote this letter, uh, Mr. Dami, on Monday? Pardon? Are you aware when you wrote this letter if the, the lawyers for Rocks and Daffy Amepo were informed? It is not if, if a party writes for a matter to be set down for hearing, the party does not notify the other side. Yeah, it is I, for I the register of the court. I, I, I do notify. Know. I, I Hold know on. That. I'm just let, asking let, if you are aware. It's the register of the court to notify the other side by a hearing notice. And that was duly done. That is why the belief of the court was called before the court today to testify on oath as to how he did his, his work. And indeed, he testified that he duly served the lawyers on that side. The lawyers on that side rejected the process and asked for it to be retained and all, and that he left it at the office of the, of the law firm, which is due service. And, and the lawyers on that side are not cont- contesting the service on them. I was also notified. I did not know when the matter would be set, set down for you. I only applied to the chief justice for an isolated hearing of the matter, and the chief justice fixed today, and we were all notified. We were all served by a hearing notice. Hearing notice was served on me, and I showed up in court. Hearing notice was served on Mr. Tadosori, sorry, counsel for parliament, and, and, the, and parliament was duly represented not only by, through its counsel, but even by a party, the deputy director of legal, or director of the drafting in parliament, showed up in court. So really, there was absolute compliance with due process. And I think that we must stop throwing dust into the eyes of the success of, 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 of the lay public. Uh, and that's the Attorney General. Please stay with me because Edu G uh, is still with me on the line. Edu G, he's provided the clarity. He wrote this letter on Monday and the Supreme Court, of course, the Chief Justice has the power to decide when to constitute the panel to hear any case, acted on that letter. And he says, and again, it was in court today, it was before the courts, that the, uh, the Roxanne Nelson FM appointed the lawyers were duly served 
doesn't that clear up the questions you were asking earlier? It doesn't at all. The attorney general knows that when you are writing a letter, an ex party communication of this nature, to the ladyship, the chief justice, you copy your opponent. You Evans, copy. Evans, if I may come in, that is totally That's wrong. That's for ABC reason. The letter I, I wrote this letter. Mr. Dami, if you may, Mr. Dami, if you may, Dami, if you may I, I will definitely give you an opportunity to correct that. Make a lot of if you want to. Hold your thought. Hold your thought. Mr. Dami, he's been on. I am saying, I am saying that the letter is coming back. And listen to my explanation. Mr. Dami, he was pretty quiet on the line whilst you explained and allowed you to explain because indeed it's important for us to have clarity. Let him make his point. And then you can definitely give us your own thoughts on what he had said, if indeed you still have something to say. So we can have a, a very decent conversation that audiences can also understand. You said at the beginning, this is important for people to have clarity about. Let, them, let me just hear him for a second. Yes, Eduji. Yeah, so the point I was making is that because to avoid ex party communication, what you do is that you copy the lawyer on the other side. That for A, B, C, D reason, I think this matter that we are handling, I want expedited, uh, expedited here. So, I've written this letter. You copy the other person so that the other person is in the know that this is what you are doing. In this case, no such happened. So, this whole business that Somebody doesn't appreciate the fact that you can write a letter. The practice is to copy the other side. That is what you do. In this case, the other side, which is the lawyer, was only served on the, with a hearing notice to appear in court. Not as to communication whether the matter should be heard. Today, two distinct matters. So why are we trying to confuse the issues? By the time the hearing notice had been served or whatever on the plaintiff, the understanding is that the court has acted on your ex party letter or application you claim. So that is a point that ought to be made. Yes, go for your brother. What, anyway, what, what so, lawyer... This or Robson copied in this letter. Yeah, you asked the question. Uh, let's the Attorney General answer. Right. Again, a lot of ignorance is being put out there. Mm. And I'm saying that, for the record, a letter written by a party to cause the matter listed for hearing or to be heard, either to the registrar or the chief justice, is not a judicial process. A judicial process is the hearing notice that will be issued first one to the letter and he he knows it if, uh, if he doesn't know it then indeed it will be class ignorance of the highest order that if a party is writing to the register of the court or the chief justice asking for a matter to listen for hearing there is no way you copy the other side you propose a date in it in, in this case i did not even propose the date at all i only asked for an extra letter hearing on the matter and the hearing notice which is supposed to be the judicial process was duly served on the party and that is what is supposed to be done and that's what made the point that we must stop debasing the image of the judiciary. We must stop debasing law practice in this manner through all these unwarranted comments about the integrity of the judiciary when indeed there is absolutely no concern at all. I think that in this matter, and I do not even see why there's, there's such a problem. Council for Parliament, which is actually the affected party, was even in support of my opposition to the application. He supported my opposition to application because the application filed by the firm of was totally frivolous and, and baseless. And that for me is actually the point of interest. Uh, substantively, so they, substantively, the matter has been so, dismissed. So when the Speaker of Parliament adjourned proceedings in the manner in which he did on the basis of this application, only for his own lawyer to turn up in court and, and oppose, oppose the Speaker of Parliament. Substantively on that subject, though. Uh, now that the matter has been dismissed, you've written to the Speaker already objecting to his decision to suspend the hearing uh, when it comes to the ministers who were nominated. Are you taking further steps to ensure that the verdict of the court today on this matter is implemented by Parliament now that they're on recess? 
Well, I think Parliament was in court. Parliament was represented through its lawyer, and I know the lawyer, very decent practitioner, no doubt will do the proper thing by notifying his client and all. And at least for, for now, it's been cleared, this issue of agreement of time that was raised by Eti Tamakro. You see that the argument is flawed. So you, so, you leave, so, so you so you leave you parliament. Know, they are some education. Sometimes it matters. There's no need for any abuse of time yeah. when a matter Ms. Ms. Adame, um, um, has not been listed for so, hearing. So you leave parliament to act on the ruling today, and you expect them to, in essence, no. I'm saying that council for parliament was in court. Council for parliament had a ruling, and clearly, in accordance with due process, I'm sure he will instruct his client. And I'm saying that indeed, the core by me for parliament to reconsider the decision made by the speaker has even been made more imperative mm. by this ruling. Uh, and thankfully, we've just been joined by Nika Posamuado, and he represents Roxing Nelson Dafiameko eh, in this particular matter. And today, the bailiff was uh, hauled before the court and asked questions because it emerged today in court, it was reported, that an attempt was made to serve the processes on Nika Posamuado and the report was that the, there was a rejection of this. Uh, Nick Pakosamadu, thank you for your time here on, on, on Newsnight. Hello, Nick Pakosamadu. Hello, Nick Pakosamadu. Okay, well, we may have lost him on the line. Uh, we also have uh, Bobby Bansing still with us and Eduji Tamaklo also uh, with us on this. And if you're just joining us today, a major day in court, as you know, that tussle between the legislature and the executive has been playing out uh, ever since the LGBTQ bill was passed. Uh, it, it came to a head today when the court had to decide on another aspect of this that had prevented the president's nominees from being confirmed by parliament because the speaker had referred to this application uh, before the courts. That is the subject of some controversy tonight. Uh, thankfully, Nick Pakosa Mado joins us right now. Hello, Nick Pakosa Mado. Thanks for your time here on Newsnight. Hi, Eva. Yes. So, is it true that you rejected the processes when no. the bailiffs attempted you know, to that, serve? That, that's completely untrue. And it's quite unfortunate that the bailiff of the court would, on oath, tell a bare face like the court. Now, this is the, 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 the narration of events. I received a call, and luckily I have the record, from the bailiff of the court at 10.50 a.m. yesterday. I was not in Accra at that particular moment. So I told him that I unfortunately could not receive whatever ah, process that is, we had. Sorry, Later. sorry, Akule. Oh, hello? Yes, Igbo Samado, I can hear you. Okay. So I said yesterday at 10.50 a.m., I received a phone call from a bailiff of the Supreme Court who said he had a process that he wanted to serve on me. Unfortunately, I was not in Accra at the moment. So I told him that he should take the number of Honorable Roxton and ensure that he delivers the process to him. And I sent him the number at 10.57 a.m. And he said, received with thanks. That was the last time I dealt with the belief. Now, this belief later on apparently goes to my office and says that I don't tell himself at the front desk and says he's a bailiff of the court and that he has a process to serve. He takes out the process and then puts it on the table. Now, the secretary cites the process with my name on it and told him that, oh, I wasn't in the office, but if he could wait and let me sign him when I came or when he got in contact with me. He said he wanted to call his boss and confirm whether that should be what he should do. That was the last time anybody heard of it. He told them he was making a phone call and he'll be back. So nobody signed for the process because he said he was making a phone call and would be back. Luckily, we have a CCTV system in our office with an audio capacity. So we have him on CCTV and I'll put the CCTV out. And you have him Whatever on CCTV? Whatever he said was a blatant lie. You mean what he told the court today? He told the court, and see, I he, he, he was under oath before and the court. Quoted, yes, and quoted that, and quote, he says, I had instructed my clerk at the front desk to refuse the court process in that particular case. Why would I say that? 
That is what he told the court. You're saying you exactly. didn't instruct anybody. And that is what is on his effect report. And luckily, we have the CCTV with the audio on it. When he and left, so I have sent it out for you to listen to it. It in, is not true. In court today, he also said that when this happened, he left the documents there at front desk and left. So he told the front desk before he was making the call to the registrar to clarify whether he should wait for me to come and sign or whether he should leave. And he never came back. And so you see, normally when you bring a process to a front desk, you sign for it and you also record you as having come with the date and everything because we have a process which is not of our office. So why would we not accept the process? So, but why were you not in court today, though? Precisely because I wasn't in the office yesterday. And so clearly, when he brought and left the document here, nobody had touched it. So nobody opened no, the document to no, check we, which we date We didn't even know what it was. We didn't even know who he was. That was the sad thing. And I wasn't even in the office the whole day. But be that it may, once the court said it has been left there, with proper service, we let it go. If the court has already ruled, so what can you do? Uh, I mean, but everybody knew it was widely reported that this case was going to be heard today. Really? I was mean, it I'm, I'm a journalist. I knew. That this case was going to be heard today? Yeah, I'm a journalist. I knew it was going to be heard today. And well, so no, you were a journalist. You knew the case was going to be heard today. I didn't know. You weren't there. Your client was also not there. Yeah. And the court has ruled. What can we say? <laughs> what, what about. At the... least the substantive case is still pending. It is. Yes, so are, you aware, are you aware I mean, of... When you file an injunction, it can be granted, it can be dismissed. What can you do? The only other thing was that we have filed two injunctions because the second one was... We're going to redraw the first one to replace with the second one. So you can understand why the court said it was duplicitous. Yes, because it was two injunctions. We're going to redraw one and then have one head. But anyway, that is already happened. So we live by, by the court's decision. We respect it. What can you say? Even though you disagree with it, that is the decision of the court. Did, so I, have to did I just hear you say that you are putting in another injunction application on the separate matter? No, 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 no. no. We, I said we have put in two injunction applications. That is why you heard the court. We were going to withdraw one when we were in court. That is why, of course, because we were not there, the court described the two applications as being duplicitous, duplicating each other. Uh -huh. Are you aware of a letter written on Monday by the Attorney General asking for an expedited hearing of this? Oh, it is, it is, not, it is not abnormal. Even though normally you would have expected him to come maybe by a motion. He says he filed a letter. We were not copied though. But if he says he filed a letter asking for an expedited hearing of the matter, that he can write. Because we have also, but in our case, in the Mandamus, we have filed a formal application for abridgment of time. So if he filed a letter, unfortunately, we were not copied. At least maybe they are copying us, we would then be able to speak to it. But he didn't copy us. And if the court had granted him the um, expedited hearing by issuing us hearing notices, well, that is the court. And you have no grievance with, with that? Oh, but of course, we would have loved to have been notified. Obviously, if he had, if the letter had come, then we would be in a position to have maybe be in the know that, of course, then the matter is going to be, to be heard. Yes, normally Supreme Court hearing notices are issued, but normally there's time. There's time. We have a pending judgment in the, the same rocks in, in the um, first lady and second lady matter. The date has been... It normally it's long, you know, there are periods in between. Uh -huh. So parties are well informed and well ahead. But clearly, in this case, unfortunately, with this, so maybe you should ask for a copy of the letter and see when it was issued, when it was received, then you could make a proper analysis of the situation. Uh, but uh, it is, once he says he issued the letter and it wasn't the court registry that issued the hearing notice independently, that is a, that is a statement. So then maybe you could ask for a copy of the letter. They will know when it was issued and when the hearing notice was issued. So this clears this up now because you, of course, are a party to the case. You said you don't have an issue with him writing on Monday and asking for a bit of time, which is something that you... Did he tell you he wrote on Monday? Yeah, he said he wrote it on Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I you don't have any it. issue with that because you say it's, uh, it's normal process. No, so this is what I've said. I've said that 
you can file a letter or you can file an application. If you file a letter, maybe clearly the advice the other parties involved, we would probably be, should be given a notice of that letter. You understand? Because it is a letter that affects the rights of all the parties involved. But clearly we were not copied. And so unless I see a copy of the letter, I have to think there's any general word for it. Uh, but it, 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 it's a bit out of the norm when the date is that close. Because if you file the letter on Monday and the hearing was issued on Tuesday, that is not the normal um, period of time that the Supreme Court normally issues its hearing notices. Because for hearing notices of the Supreme Court, they normally have a bit of time. But that's why it may depend on the content of the letter. So we will all love to see a copy of the letter. And I hope you will be able to ask him to give you a copy of the letter. Uh, go for you, Badame. Yes. Um, I, um, I must admire the grace shown by um, Nipapo Tamado. And indeed, that is how all practitioners ought to conduct themselves, especially in, in the public space. Yes, Kanda and all that. And clearly, as has been stated by Nipapo as well as um, Bobby Panson that you were speaking to before, it is not extraordinary, it is not unusual for such a process to be resorted to. That is an application to a lady, the Chief Justice, to exercise their powers under the Constitution and also the Court Act to cause an extra hearing of a matter. And that is what we did. Um, I have nothing further to add to that. I'm saying that clearly the process are resorted to where known to the law, it's within the law, it's up to parties to familiarize themselves with the rules governing proceedings in court. And so Eddie Tamako and Co. who scream loud and on, on various platforms and allege that there has been a violation of due process and cite rules which do not apply. Today, he's talking about agreement of, of time, and it's been shown to him by another lawyer as well as myself that the issue of agreement of time doesn't even arise at all. So clearly it shows that he's unfamiliar with the rules of court. It was a tamakura, I mean. And so really, I mean, we must, as I said once again, stop unnecessarily attacking the judiciary where there's no cause at all. That is what I say. Uh, this, uh, but this but process was th there's still one case of standing, the uh, Richard Sky case. You were asked in court by my reporter uh, whether you would take the same approach in that particular uh, case. You said, well, oh, the approach I adopted in this matter was informed by the... Um, implication this had for state business in parliament. Apart from this approval of ministers, there were very serious financial matters that had been agenda by the Speaker of Parliament on account of this matter. And that is why this, and the court is actually even going on an Easter break. And I'm sure that is why the Supreme Court actually faced the hearing for today. Yes, the, the, there is a regular legal vacation at Easter time. There are three legal vacations in a year. And it's up to parties to plan the way they conduct their cases. If you do not plan your case well and force within the Christmas break, so be the court will, the Supreme Court will not will not hear your matter. So there's no way any case can be heard next week or perhaps two weeks. And the courts are going an Easter break. That's except the matter that of record. It's case, something that's known to the rules of court. Except that in the Richard Sky case, Murray, uh, not just the of this one. In the Richard Sky point, case, uh, in the Richard Sky case, Attorney General, there is a, a bill passed by Parliament which is also in limbo. It also uh, has constitutional implications that also, many will argue, requires an expedited hearing to settle this matter, considering its high-profile nature and how it's become a, a pretty divisive subject. Yes, but, but I'm saying that it, there are many parties to, to the action. The Speaker of Parliament and what, is a party to the matter. He's represented in the matter through the same council. Um, Rich Kai also as a lawyer. And I'm explaining the peculiar circumstances which resulted in the application be made. I do not know whether the same considerations hold for that matter. Of course, I expect the Supreme Court to, to, to deal with the matter as quickly as possible. But I've adverted your mind to the fact that there's, a, there's an Easter vacation coming up. And the Supreme Court will not hear any matter for some time now. But you will not apply for the day, so hearing please, of that I mean, stop this unnecessary um, play to the gallery. No, it's the a question, question there's, a, there's an Easter vacation. It is in the yes, court. It, it is. In the, the rules of court. Return. I'm asking yes. categorically, you will not apply for an expedited I hearing. Have, I do not, please. I do not do my cases. Or, did I inform the public about the letter that I was writing before I wrote it? I never did it. Did I? 
I'm just saying I never informed the public that I was writing a letter before I wrote it. Mm. <laughs> so, please, uh, stop. I did not do my case in the media. And I did not review my strategies well, in the my, media. My question is simple. And I'm what saying that we are that? actually <laughs> constrained by even the Easter vacation and, and what have you. Indeed, if, if I write to CJ, it's after the two justices. The two justices can, it's an exercise of uh, administrative discretion by two justices. So that, that request, <laughs> maybe it's not. Yeah, and this is the first time I've written to the two justices asking for a special sharing of various matters. Some have been granted, some have not been granted. Yeah, but the question is whether you will write it. Please, I've answered you adequately. Thank you. Stop playing to the gallery. That is the Attorney General. I'm not playing to the gallery. I'm asking a simple question. It's about uh, applying the principle. In one case, you apply for an expedited hearing. In another case, related to the same matter, though, um, it's, it's fair to ask that question. Uh, the NDC's Director Liga is still with me. He is Eddie Tamaklo. Mr. Tamaklo, uh, you've heard the Attorney General. You heard uh, the Nipa Kosamado, who is the lawyer uh, for Dafia Mekpo. What's the party's position now, now that you've heard all sides on this? You are unhappy with the expedited nature in which the Supreme Court decided to hear this. Now that you've had all sides, do you still hold that position? And uh, what's, what's next for the party on this matter? I think that your question to the arrogance of the Attorney General is the answer he gave you. You ask a very simple question from this arrogant Attorney General, whether or not Per the principle of writing to the Chief Justice, you will write to have an expedited hearing in respect of the Richard Star. He says you are playing to the gallery. That is how he has misconducted himself in this revered office. I will say more. And that's the director of legal for the NDC there. He is Edu Tamaklo. Uh, where do you stand on this debate? I want to hear from you. 0551111997. And uh, if you're just joining us wondering what we're talking about, this was a major case before the Supreme Court today. It had to do with an application by Roxy Nelson Dafia uh asking the Supreme Court to stop Parliament from proceeding with its hearing when it came to the uh, confirmation of the president's ministerial nominees. As you know, the speaker had referred to that application and frozen the consideration in Parliament. The Attorney General uh, revealed to us that he had applied to the Supreme Court for an expedited hearing. The letter went on Monday and it was heard today. The NDC is unhappy with that because they believe it's double standards on the part of the uh, Supreme Court uh, when they've not done the same uh, for the Richard Sky case, which relates to the anti-gay bill. As you know, the President had said that uh, he will not receive that bill until that case is heard. What do you make of all that you've heard? 055 11 